Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my review of Paranormal Activity The Mark Ones, which is technically Paranormal Activity 5, although there's going to be a Paranormal Activity 5 in October, but this is kind of like, almost like the American Pie band camp, like the spin-off movie, although I think it was might be actually one of the most interesting Paranormal Activity movies in quite a while, because the last one was okay. They kind of went down downhill a little bit through the movies. This one, though, is a totally different self-contained story that really is not is not the same kind of a thing, you know, with them setting up the camera and it kind of swiveling around or, like, the home surveillance and all that and the things in the pool move and all that. This movie totally takes a different turn. This is about these two kids that just graduated, graduated from high school and the one kid ended up getting a camera and he also had a GoPro camera that he got for graduation. And it's basically about him... Uh, you know, filming with his friend, just sort of things that are going on. And in the building that the one guy lives in, there's something very strange going on downstairs. It's a strange woman. They kind of hear screaming and things like that. They end up dropping a GoPro camera down the vent and end up witnessing something pretty weird. And, you know, then something ends up happening. And by going down into the, you know, the room where the woman was, because I don't want to go into all the details, but something ends up happening to the one guy. And he ends up having these kind of abilities it sort of start off kind of, in, you know, okay, kind of can, you know, he can't fall, he can jump real high, nothing can happen to him. Then things start to take a pretty bad turn. The thing that I liked about this movie, though, was it wasn't like the typical found footage movie where you could tell that it was shot by, like, a real skilled director of photography that's, like, pulling focus the whole time, that has it overly sharpened, that has the lighting perfect, has the picture super high res. It's not that kind of stuff. It looks way more like just a kid with a consumer-grade camera that's set on the autofocus mode where it's, you know, focusing in and out, flickering. And I like that, that it gives it a much more realistic vibe to it. I will say, though, when it was over, there's a lot of people that kind of missed what happened at the end. You really have to pay attention to a couple things that you end up hearing in this movie that kind of explain to you why, whatever, what it can happen at the end, why it can happen. Because a lot of people weren't picking up on it and understanding what was going on. To me, though, I really liked the two characters in it. I thought it was a very different feel to it and really felt more like a real found footage movie rather than a real overly produced one or more like like I said with like those ones where it's just the stagnant cameras in the house ghost stuff this movie was far more of a movie about things happening to the guy and kind of had a bit of you know the um with the kids that could control the things with their mind kind of a feel like that to it I really did like it uh I thought that it was relatively creepy. I think it got much creepier at the very last 20 minutes of the movie. This isn't one of those ones, though, where I said where it's like, you know, chandeliers moving and things opening and that kind of stuff. It's not that kind of movie. It's much more about things happening to the one character and him kind of getting abilities and kind of try, trying to figure out what's going on with the guy. But overall, though, I would definitely recommend people check this one out. Like I said, it's pretty creepy and takes the story in a different direction. Interested in seeing, though, what they're going to do with Part 5 now. Because I kind of feel like it's kind of over that. People are kind of tired of that. You know, just stagnant things happening in the house and surveillance cameras. It's kind of gotten over and done. And there's been so many spoofs lately, you know, the girl with the dragon tattoo inside Sarah Marshall, whatever that one was. There was that one. There was a Kevin Farley one. There was Haunted House. There's so many of them. So it's kind of like that idea of that same typical Paranormal Activity movie is kind of over. And I do like, too, how they ended up bringing the other movies into this one. And I'm not going to get into what they did, but it worked pretty well. But like I said, you need to really pay attention to get why it works. So anyway, though, guys, definitely look forward to hearing what you guys think of the movie. And thanks again for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.